Hi guys, welcome to another Hui4 video. In today's video, I'm gonna show you one ideology exploit. So yeah, let's start. I'm gonna play as Portugal. Now you might think that this is an exploit where your justifications expire and where you basically lose your ruling party popularity. The exploit I did in my Netherlands video. While that exploit is definitely decent, I must admit it has one major flaw. That flaw is that you actually can't do it as an online country. If you're communist, you're gonna lose communist support once the justification expires. When you're democratic, you're gonna lose democratic support. When you're fascist, you're gonna lose fascist support. But when you're non-aligned, you're still gonna lose fascist support for some reason. However, today I got an exploit which works for non-aligned as well. And that's why I'm actually playing as Portugal. So I'm gonna go monarchist as Portugal, and I'm gonna go for a start on all focus. Also, for this exploit, you won't have to get rid of the other parties. I'll be going communist, and I won't have to ban fascism or democratic parties. Contrary to the other exploit where you actually have to do that, otherwise it's going to be very ineffective. Although banning other parties can still help. Now let's go for Royal Wedding and the Return of Duarte it is. Let's now go for Monarchist Uprising in Brazil. And let's now do the Empire of Brazil focus. Also be building some land ports right here. We're gonna need this defensive line later. The Empire of Brazil is finished and now Brazil is in a civil war. They're gonna win anyway. Let's now promote the monarchist cause in Portugal. And now let's do the restoration of the monarchy. The monarchists are winning in Brazil, as always. Let's just take Sao Paulo and end this war. Monarchists have won. Let's now send our troops back to Portugal. And now we are monarchist. Let's now do the Kingdom Reunited. Collaboration governments. I'm not gonna go for any of these. And now we united with Brazil. United Kingdom of Portugal and Brazil. So we're gonna start doing the exploit. However, for that I'll have to fight Spain. So I'm gonna go for Remember Olivenza and then deal with fascism. Since they went fascist already. And now let's do deal with fascism. This focus will give me war goals against every major as well as every neighboring fascist nation. So that will be Germany, Italy, Japan, Spain, Venezuela and also Peru. But you really only care about Spain. And now we got a war goal against Nationalist Spain. But I'm gonna wait for the Civil War to end. In the meantime, let's go for army reorganization. And that's it, Spanish Civil War has just ended. It had ended, but not really. Spain still has tons of divisions, because they haven't dealt with Carlists yet. So I'm gonna wait until they deal with Carlists, otherwise they're gonna have 50 divisions. Also, let's create an agency real quick. And we now got Nationalist victory in Spanish Civil War, which means the Civil War truly has ended. Which means that Spain only has 13 divisions now. And I believe we're ready. Let's declare war on Spain. And since we're at war, we can go for extensive conscription right away. In order to go for service by requirement, my army has to be a little bit smaller. So I'm gonna delete 6 divisions. Now we can go for service by requirement. We lost pretty much most of our country, but it doesn't matter, we're gonna win back eventually. Let's just, just deploy all of our planes, and let's make sure that they're supporting our troops. I'm not gonna pick any focus for now, since I need some political power. Let's send Ernesto to Madrid. How trap dodging. Let's just ignore this for now. Well, we now got enough political power to go for all adult serve. However, enemies still need to be more stronger than us, so let's delete some of these divisions, like these two. Is this enough? Yes, it is. Let's go for adult serve and consistently put more divisions into training. Soon we're gonna go for a counter-offensive. Also, silly me, I have forgot to assign a general and a field marshal. Doesn't matter really in this run. And let's finally deploy these divisions. Let's draw a front line and offensive line. And now we're gonna start pushing. However, I'll have to encircle some of the enemy divisions. Otherwise, it's going to be pain. And here we are. We made the very first encirclement. Let's keep liberating our land. Another nice encirclement right here, and one smaller one here as well. Another two divisions, and we finally liberated the entire Portugal. Look what's left of Spain. And that's it, we took him out. Let's now just annex them. Let's now finally solve the draft dodging. Anyway, now we're in the peace, which means we get this, ease up conscription. Basically, our conscription is too extensive, because come on, all adults serve and we're at peace. What's the point of it? What we can do is click this decision and we're gonna go for service by requirement or we're not gonna do anything about it and every four months we're gonna lose 10% stability, which is painful, but we're gonna get 10% communist support. So let's not click on this decision, let's wait for four months to pass. In the meantime, I'm gonna go for anti-democratic raids. Let's ban fascism. Now there's only non-aligned communist and democratic support. Although you don't have to do this, I just did it so I can switch my ideologies quicker. And here we are. First four months are about to expire, and it failed, which means rip or stability, we lost 10% of it, and now we got 10% communist support. We got 26% communist support. 
So basically this decision happens three times a year, which means you can get 30% communist support every single year. Not that spectacular, but better than nothing. Once again, rip to our stability. And we got 10% more communist support. Now we are at 36%. Also, what I could do now is actually ban Democratic Parties, and I'll do that once I get enough PP. I'm gonna ban Democratic Parties, and now we got 46% Communist and 53% Non-Aligned Support. A magnificent push by the French troops. Not only did they take one civil province in Piedmont, they also took northernmost province of Sardinia. Good job, France. Well done, France. Never mind. And here it comes again. Once again, bye-bye 10% stability, and hello... 10% communist support. We've now got 56% communist support, which means we'll have to wait for another 4 months. And here we go. Finally. We now got 66% communist support. Which means we can hold a national referendum. And look at this. Porto Brazilian People's Union, led by this guy, Bento Gonçalves. Which means we can now join the Comintern. Yeah, let's do that. We're now in the Comintern. Because, yeah, this makes sense. Also, we've got this low effort flag. Anyway, that's how we do that exploit. Now there is some downsides to it. There are some countries which simply have the referendums disabled. Most of the major countries got it disabled, exceptions being Italy and Russia. For example, Japan has it disabled, UK, USA, France, all those countries have it disabled. Obviously, you won't do this if you play a country which doesn't have a focus tree, then you can just go for a communist revolutionary. Also, this exploit works for every single ideology, not only the unaligned. There's one small difference. If you're fascist, non aligned or democratic, you're gonna get communist support. But if you're already communist, you're gonna get democratic support. So you can only use this to go from other ideologies to communist and from communist to democratic. While this does work for other ideologies, I would recommend you not to do it. I would recommend you to simply justify on China and Japan, wait for the war goals to expire and then lose 5% ruling party popularity. I would only recommend you to use this as non-aligned because there is nothing else you can do as non-aligned. You can only do this. While this lets you do some really cool things, like creating a communist Austria-Hungary or something like that. You can even turn the regular China, led by Chiang Kai-shek, into communist, doing this, and then from communist to either fascist or democratic. Well, this lets you create some really funny countries. It also has its downsides, like losing tons of stability, wasting tons of political power, and wasting lots of time not expanding, just sitting there and doing nothing pretty much. However, it can be beneficial if you already got some communist support already, or if you want to do some stuff for the memes. And let's say we wrote Ottoman Empire and we did this, and now we can hold national referendum. <laughs> Ottoman Socialist Republic. Anyway, that's it guys. I hope you enjoyed the video, I hope it was informative. If you did, and if it was, like, share and subscribe. Consider joining my Discord server, if I miss something out, mention it in the comments, and yeah, see you in the next video. Bye!